Welcome, everybody. Uh, I thought I'd uh, use a little snap camera for the uh, occasion since it's a uh, Mike Tyson's punch out theme kind of thing going on. Uh, this talk is how to win a fight with solar. And I came up with this as I was fighting with solar. And then I realized this title probably should be um, different. It, it probably should be how to fight, win a fight against solar uh, because some of the configuration problems that we're having um, this whole talk came from me trying to migrate, um, solar from one service, one server, we were migrating the site over and then all of a sudden their search start, stopped working because of, of solar. Um, so what things we're going to be talking about a little bit about me, my favorite subject, um, uh, we're going to talk about what is solar really briefly on that. I think a lot of people know what it is by now. Uh, talk a little bit about how to configure Drupal and solar. Uh, how to really configure Drupal and solar, and then some of the solar configurations that actually uh, you have a problem with that tend to be a problem um, for that. So, um, oops, there's a, I'm on polls, not chat. I said I was going to listen to chat. Anyway, so little, that's why, because I keep going to advance the slides and it's, I'm in the wrong window. There you go. A little bit about me, uh, Mark Casillas. I'm a technical lead at Canopy Studios. Um, I just literally got my uh, Canopy t-shirt yesterday, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, do a lot of back-end development uh, stuff with uh, uh, React and Node and, of course, Drupal and uh, in Vue these days. Uh, if you need to get a hold of me, I am Marky on the Drupal Slack um, or Team Poop on um, the Twitters or a muscle drunken Drupal uh, uh, on the Twitters as well. So if you ever need anything there or you see me getting in an argument with myself, we know why anyway. I'm also in a band uh, here in Albuquerque called Darling. Uh, and in theory, we have a Facebook Live going on Sunday e evening. Uh, we're trying to figure out if our guitarist is gonna be back from camping in order to do that. Uh, so if you want some good music or wanna follow a band, um, feel free. Um, a little self-promotion is always fun. All right. Uh, another thing I want to say, thank you, Canopy, uh, for allowing me to do this. I mean, I'm just started with them and they're already letting me uh, take most of the week off for bad camp. Uh, and uh, we are definitely hiring. Uh, we're hiring for a tech lead, uh, which is my position as well. Not for my position, but to work with me. Uh, we're also looking for full stack developers, uh, uh, contract Drupal developers, uh, project managers, WordPress developers. Uh, if you want to come work for a really, really nice company, I highly recommend coming and working with the, uh, my, our friends at uh, Canopy. And I'm really distracted by how high Tommy jumps, the guy in the upper right-hand corner or upper left-hand corner, how high he is jumping right there. It's, it's, it's very interesting. So, all right. So first round one against Glass Joe. Uh, what is solar? Solar is a, uh, a search indexing uh, server. It is actually built in Java uh, by uh, the uh, Apache uh, Lucerne project. Uh, so it is a Java server itself. Instead of having a database where it's querying the database over and over again, uh, it's actually using an index to figure out uh, the best results uh, for your search uh, information. And this search, uh, it takes a big load off of uh, the database. If you search why solar over uh, Drupal search, um, the, there's a, just a ton of studies on there on how it will help take the load off your site for search. Because if you're querying the database to search each field, we all know that Drupal has a ton of different tables for each field, it doesn't really do a good like search uh, to it. So you can't really, things have to be very exact. Solar takes care of that by indexing it on a um, on, on a separate way. Uh, so I uh, do recommend uh, using it when you can. Uh, there are other options. There's also Elasticsearch. Um, uh, and then there's a third one that I didn't write down that I can't remember what it is right now. So uh, the great thing about solar is it's standards based, uh, like it says there in the little promo of, uh, if you go to Apache solar, uh, com, I think that's what that is. And uh, it's standards based. So it's, you can get the, the results through XML, through JSON, uh, just with straight HTTP requests. Uh, and then that way you can pull your stuff, not only in Drupal, but in other projects as well. If you have a Gatsby search, you can do solar, uh, search in solar 
uh, if you have, um, uh, you know, WordPress, WordPress works well with Solar as well. Um, all sorts of different things work with that. Um, this round was very short uh, because it's a glass Joe, but also again, we all pretty much, a, a lot of people understand what Solar is and what, what its purpose is for. So why are we doing talking about this? Because we got solar inside of Drupal itself. Um, and there is a thing called in Drupal called the uh, uh, search API. And what it is, is it allows uh, Drupal to use other services, other, it's been recognized that, you know, the, the, the core database search uh, can be cumbersome on large sites, very enterprise size, site, uh, size sites. Um, if so, a bunch of people are searching at the same time, it'll really drag your site down. Um, so we have the solar, uh, we have the search API, and then we have a uh, module called search API solar, which actually um, interacts between the search API and then the solar servers. And I've got this big cumbersome um, graph here because it talks about the different versions of solar that are out there. Um, solar six and below are sunsetting at the end of the year. Um, in December. Uh, so I did want to kind of highlight that you want to be working mostly with Solar 7, if not 8, um, or uh, Solar Cloud. Uh, we all, you know, PHP 7.2 is pretty much a requirement in Drupal. It's lower versions are supported, but you really want to use that. Um, and that's what the, the, the module is pointing out. You can use uh, the legacy submodules. Um, to, to continue to work with Solar 4 and below. But as of uh, uh, 20, uh, December in 2020, I don't know the exact date, uh, it's going to be uh, shutting down the support uh, for Solar. So if things go awry, you're really not going to be uh, having a good time uh, with that. Uh, but Solar 7 is great, and Solar 7 is usually uh, available on most of the services out there. I'll, I'll be talking here in a little bit about the differences uh, of the platforms that are out there that have it. Um, so yeah, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna actually install the search API uh, module in uh, Drupal along with the search API solar module in Drupal. And there are a couple other helper modules that are out there for you, but I will be discussing those in a little bit. Um, local platforms all support it. Lando, Doxel, uh, DDEV, which I just put DD instead of DDEV. Um, but anyway, DDEV's out there, out there as well. Uh, they all so, uh, uh, support various uh, versions of Solar as well. So you can actually, if your site does have Solar 4, I do know that Doxel does support it. But again, not really something that you want to be using. You kind of want to get these things up, upgrading as well. And I know that Lando starts out at, at uh, Solar 7, and I believe so does DDEV. But then you can actually switch to the different flavors rather easily in your local uh, uh, development to match your, um, your production environment and ultimately be able to uh, have your local look exact and feel exactly like uh, as if it's on a server away, which makes development way, way easier. And I thought I had changed pre presentation title um, somewhere else, but apparently I did not. So anyway, um, hosting platforms are interesting because some of them are fully extensible and some of them still have uh, older versions. Um, in Acquia, it uses Solar uh, 4.5 um, and it's trying to ramp itself up. So you definitely want to use the uh, Search API Solar uh, 8.x, and that's actually what the other thing I want to point out here. Um, there's the Drupal compatibility as of 8.8. Uh, .8. We can actually use this uh, 4.x uh, or, or the the minor revision uh, of the the Drupal module, uh, such as 4.x, um, and that's what you're going to want to be using for Drupal 8, Drupal 9. And that's only going to support Solar 7 and above. So you're going to want to be using that with the newer versions. If you need support for the lower versions, uh, it is recommended that you use the 8.x-1.x. Uh, .x, um, and the versions 8.x-2 uh, and 8.x.3 are right out. So anyway, you're going to want to use that contributed module. Pantheon actually uses a uh, solar version 3.6. However, they have a very specific 
uh, uh, module for use with the Pantheon system. And uh, I do, do enjoy me some Pantheon, and I do like the way that their solo works. And what was very interesting is the entire time I've been trying to set up Drupal 8 configurations with Pantheon, I had no idea this module existed. And once I found this module, it just made the interaction between Solar and Drupal uh, way, way easier. And uh, for most most levels on Pantheon, do, do have Solar available to them uh, out of the box. And then Platform SH is great because you can pretty much define anything you want with them. Um, their versions of Solar, they go from 4.10 all the way up to the latest uh, version 8.6. Um, now, some of them, if you want the older version, you have to have a higher tier support level, which is interesting to me because that seems backwards. Um, but hey, um, you can get it if you need it. And it's all configured inside your platform uh, config file. And I'll be showing more about platform a little bit more because the whole reason I brought up this talk was to um, because I was running into an issue in platform and then they helped me solve it. So anyway. Um, so yeah, you're going to, with platform, if you're, again, using 7.x or above, you're going to want to be using the Search API Solar module 4.x uh, and above. Um, so there's that. Uh, external platforms. So you don't even have to have it hosted on your uh, your own service. You can actually use external things. Aquia Search it can be used as just a search platform for you, a uh, node factor or... Um, you can actually host it with Apache themselves. And then you can use that information. It will index your site for you and then store that off somewhere else and then serve that back to you off somewhere from somewhere else, well, which is really nice because again, you're taking the weight off of your, uh, your website and you're gonna be able to uh, search easily without your site being bogged down. So those are other options that you have out there. And, um, yeah, actually, uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, I do have a, a link to the contributed module Search API Solar uh, because, frankly, that is a screen cap of or a section of that uh, as well. So those are your options for Solar uh, and Drupal. Um, one thing, though, uh, you want to be careful of indexing external uh, your development environments in your production search. So this actually, I ran into this uh, a while back ago. I was happily working on search on my local and had uh, silly nodes names and silly node titles and pictures of cats or my dog. Um, and then all of a sudden that was being searched and indexed in, in the production because I was using the same production environment. So short story, very long or short story about the right size is that you want to make sure that you're searching and indexing the right environments without uh, crossing crossing streams would be the best way of, of, of there. So uh, something to think about while you're out there. All right, round three, Drupal Solar configuration. And this is a, uh, was part of the reason that I, that I ran into uh, this issue is because there is the Drupal UI where you can actually just this is the actual setup for a Drupal, uh, a solar server in the uh, solar uh, module or the search API solar module. And you pick out your protocol, you name the solar host. Uh, you know, in this instance, uh, you know, I changed the name of the solar host because to protect the innocent, I guess you could say. Your ports can change from 8080 to 8630 or 8363 or something like that. Uh, and then what your core is depends on on that as well. And I'll get more into um, configuring that kind of stuff later on in life. Um, so this is actually where you want to set that stuff up to make sure that the server and Drupal are talking to each other. And then you set up an index to kind of uh, to chat between the two of them. But sometimes, um, you, you, like I was saying before, you have a problem with the uh, server being live and then indexing something else. Um, so what you can do is actually you can take that uh, config and just stick whatever in here, uh, like this one actually says config found in settings.php because we're gonna be actually changing that depending on the settings.php uh, of what you're gonna do. Of course, there is no host called config found in settings.php. And if there is, 
I'm kind of sad I don't know about it. But you have that ability to get to get that information. And then what you do is you go into your uh, settings. Um, and this is actually the, the platform, which is backwards because the slide's out of order. But what platform does is it actually has a uh, relationship where all that information for the, your, your server is stored remotely and you don't have to have to put those uh, credentials or anything else into a um, into your uh, repository. Um, and it just basically takes it and takes your uh, config uh, your config for your connector of the machine name uh, of it and the machine name can be whatever you want to call your server and uh, and it will work for you. And then it'll automatically connect to that instance as opposed to connecting to whatever is live or, or whatnot. And Pantheon does the same thing with the uh, Pantheon, the settings.pantheon.php. Uh, Acquia does some other stuff with their Acquia search module. Um, so that's ways that you can get around to make sure that you're configuring uh, it based on there. And this is the, actually the, the slide I thought we were looking at. And this is actually taking in your settings.local.php or even your settings.php since there's really no uh, sensitive information in there. You can say that, hey, everybody instantly, if I'm local, I want to connect to the solar host, which is what the, the host is called uh, in Doxel, using that path and then whatever the core is, because the core, again, once again, will change depending on how you install. And then the port is all set up and that will override whatever is in your config uh, export or whatever is in your uh, your your settings on in the database as well. Um, yeah, so I use the same slide twice, so that's unnecessary. So that's the difference in the in, in setting up uh, solar. Um, I've got three minutes. So, wow, I figured that would be done quicker than this. So. Uh, no questions yet. So we're going to move on to round four, which is solar configuration. So, and this is actually where I was going to go with this talk at the beginning. Um, I was going to actually look in these files and help people understand what they are. They are. It's full of files. And if you mess with them incorrectly, uh, everything will break. And then you're going to cry. Uh, Here be dragons is what I'm trying to say. Um, this is stuff that the the server itself sets up for you and will read and write into. Let it do that. Don't try to mess with that directly um, because you can actually get that config after you set up your solar. You can actually, there's a nice shiny button that says to get the config.zip and it will pull that stuff down. So say you have a server somewhere else and you're trying to replicate that on your local, you can actually get that same config and pull it onto your local uh, local file. Um, so yeah, there, there's all that information. Um, and this is actually how you set up something in Doxel to create it, um, where you can actually have Doxel say, okay, I want to use this custom config, um, on there. And if you go to the Doxel, uh, site, it'll let you know what's going on there. Um, but your mileage may vary because depending on the version of solar that you install, uh, the var lib solar conf, uh, in seven is actually in the uh, the opt folder, which is a different folder structure altogether. Um, so I think just install solar and let it do it. There's also a thing called uh, the Apache Solar Defaults module, which is part of the search of uh, IP, excuse me, API Solar Defaults mod module. But the problem with that is it takes a very heavy liberty on, or expects there to be an article with a body and a comment and a field tags and a field image and a page with a body. So if your page doesn't do it, or if you don't have that, you can actually patch it to change it around. However, that's kind of a pain. So again, just install, export the configuration and uh, everything will, will be working on, on there as well. So you can have your config, it'll be exactly what you need it to be. Um, and that's it for me. I did not see any questions. I am right at time. Was there anything at all? Uh, no, no, not seeing anything. Um, just some uh, housekeeping uh, that, that uh, Amy June doesn't want me to do, but I'm going to do it really quickly after we're done here. And actually, it's a little bit why I'm rushing. We're going to go see uh, Donna with Accessible Marketing Practices. And Donna is who I will refer to as my handler because she's actually the one that prettied up my slides uh, to include the images on here. And then after that, we have the happy hour. 
and then a board night as well. Uh, I believe the board game night is going to be on a Discord, and then the happy hour is going to be on a Zoom. Uh, so as always, uh, check the Bad Camp website for more details. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. You can uh, reach me again at uh, Slack or email me, Marky, at canvystudios.com. Uh, and I'm going to say that's time. Uh, thank you very much for attending, and I hope uh, I helped. Take care.